Okay, welcome back. So between videos, I just made a few adjustments to some of these textures here. I actually adjusted the scale of the, the barrel planks themselves as well as the top ones. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks just now. Maybe the scale's a little bit off, but I think it will do for the moment. Now what I want to do is add some dirt into this. Now I want to add some dirt around these rings on the wood. So let's go to the barrel wood layer. I'm going to add a folder in and just put my wood in that folder and we'll just call this wood base and I'm going to add another layer on top of that I'll just add a fill layer I'll search for dirt and we have a bunch of dirt layers here let's just grab something like this dirt 4 drag it over onto base colour I'm also going to increase the height just slightly and increase the roughness as well I want to change the base colour to multiply that way the dirt shows up only in black areas we don't get any of the light dirt and what we can do now is we can tweak this balance to add or remove dirt now I don't want it uniform like this what I want to do is use a generator I'm going to go over here to my smart masks and I'm going to find one of these masks that's going to pretty much just put dirt in ambient occlusion areas so let's see, we want something like dust dart, maybe dart dry, let's try this one, drag this across and what this will do is it will create a mask and a mask editor and if I click on that mask editor I can go through all these different settings and tweak them. So by default you can see that we're getting dart mostly in these ambient occlusion areas, you can see a lot of it on the bottom here and around about these rings we're also getting a decent amount scattered across the place now I can see that this dirt is maybe a little bit too high so we can go back over here and tweak our height a little bit to get what we want but we don't want it to be noticeably sticking out the surface like this that's too much we want it just to be pretty subtle and as far as the roughness goes yeah we don't want it to be reflective as the wood maybe about there and I think that's okay for the moment so let's just go in back to this mask layer and let's just tweak some of these settings so first of all let's take this global balance down a little bit and let's go into the ambient occlusion settings and increase this balance now that's actually taking the dirt away so let's decrease it and in fact let's invert that increase this balance increase this contrast and this is just a case of trying to tweak some of these settings to get as much dirt in these seams as possible not quite giving us the effect we want What we could do is instead of using this mask editor, which we will just delete, we can use a bitmap mask and we'll just use the ambient occlusion for the barrels themselves. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this ambient occlusion will work correctly. I think what we need to do is invert it. So let's add filter. Invert and another filter contrast increase the contrast on this. You can see getting some effects there. Uh, let's try and tweak this. That's given us a very subtle an ambient occlusion mask there Grab that tip out there, let's do this setting as much as we can so the ambient occlusion isn't giving as much of a drop off there that's not a problem, what we can do now is we can add another filter blur we can blur this a bit then go back in the filter contrast 
pump that contrast up. And you can see that actually starts to take those previously blurred masks and tweak them a little bit. Then go in and play about with these settings a little bit. Starting to give us what we want. By layering up different filters like this, you can usually get the effect you want. I think that's going to be okay for the moment. I think that will suit us fine. Um, I will add another dark layer though. I'll go to my grunges and we'll just go with this grungy dark. I can base color. Again, we're going to go with a very subtle amount of height, rougher. We're going to go with our mask, so smart mask. Let's just go with something dark dusty. We'll go with that. Plug this in, mask editor. This is going to be our overall kind of dark for the entire model. Just bump up the texture a little bit. The base color, I'm going to keep where it is. I'm going to take the opacity down about 60. Pump up this a little bit more and that's just discolouring the wood a little bit. And basically what I'll do is between videos I'll use the same kind of technique on the top. Okay so I just sped that part up instead of cutting it out and I basically just added another ambient occlusion based dirt around the edge here as well as adding a kind of overall dirt map to it. And very subtle, I mean you can't really see much difference unless you turn it on and off. But you can definitely see there's an effect there. And the same with the ambient occlusion dirt. Just adds a little bit more to the material itself. And I think that actually looks pretty good. I might even just leave the barrel like that. Um, we could add a little bit of edge damage to the top of the wood. Now I'm not really going to do anything else to the metal because everything's pretty much stored within that one smart material. I've got the edge damage I was looking for, I've got the scratches, I've got the dirt. Everything's pretty good, but I think I want some edge damage around the top of this. So let's go to the barrel wood again. And there's a bunch of ways we can do edge damage to this. Um, the easiest way is just to do a fill layer. I'm going to turn off colour, metal. I'll keep on height, roughness and normal. The roughness we want to be a little bit rougher. The height we want to be lower. And essentially what we want to do here is use some kind of mask. So let's see, let's see what we can do here. Let us grab procedural. And we have to find something that we can use for the kind of damage that we are we are looking for. Now we can tweak some of these settings a little bit later on. Um I think I'll go with this grunge one here. In fact, we should have something that's all scratches and scrapes, so let's try something like that. So we have these ones here, grunge, scratches, dirty, grunge, scrapes. Let's try this one. Just going to grab that and put that into height. Straight away we get all this damage all over the place, which we'll tweak in a while. Now I'm going to just change the scale of this. Take it to something like this, and let's look at the top. Now the way this roughness is working, we need to tweak the roughness, so I'm going to go over here to roughness. I'm going to change this to... Not, maybe not lighten, maybe multiply. But let's just turn the roughness off of this layer for the moment. But this we've changed the wrong one there for some reason. Let's just take the roughness off of this layer for the moment. And let's add in another smart mask. We want something that's edge damage, so let's try something like concrete edges. Drag this in. And you can see that immediately we're getting all this damage. This damage appears to be jumping out the surface instead of in. Let's go over here. Invert this. 
quickest way to do it. Go to our mask. And we only need to worry about getting the top edge of this looking right because the middle part we're going to pretty much mask off. Let's get this top edge looking the way we want. First of all, let's tweak our global balance. Let's move it up and down and see what we can do with that. So here we go, we can add just some subtle damage here. That's pretty much what we want. Tweak this texture. This lets us add some more edge damage in, so that's looking good. Check this second one. This one kind of fills in that damage, so let's keep that all the way down. Ambient occlusion. A good idea to tweak this because we don't want the damage in ambient occlusion regions. Let's take this a little bit, drag this up. Curvature is where we're really going to do most of this. So we do want it set to edges because we don't want the damage in any small areas. Uh, the sharp areas, we can keep pretty much where it is. I think most of these settings are going to be fine, huge. We'll turn down big, we'll turn down large, we'll turn down medium is where we're going to start getting a decent effect. Even that, not much is changing. Soft, again, not much is changing. Increase this a little bit. And the fine and sharp, pretty much keep where they are. So we're just getting this very subtle damage right on the edges here. We're also getting it all the way up and down the barrel. So this is the tricky part. Now we want to mask out that damage. So let's just go into our front view here. I'm going to add paint layer. I'm going to grab my brush. We'll make this a little bit harder. Take it to about here. Just increase the size of this. And we want this to be black. And we're just going to paint out all this edge damage up to this top rim. And then down to this bottom rim. Now to make this a little bit easier, let's just do it in the 2D view. So basically what we're doing is we're getting out all the damage in this area here. I'm just doing this with my mouse, so it might not be the most accurate paint job ever, but we'll do our best. Get all this here, and I'll just make sure I've got the middle of this really painted out. That should be okay, hopefully that looks fine. Go back to our 3D view. So now all that damage from the middle is gone and we should still have it on the top. Yep, still got it. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else I really want to do to this. There are a lot of other things I could do. I could add a stencil onto it, um, like a Jack Daniels logo or something like that. Uh, but I don't really need to go that far with it. Now I want to take these textures, export them out, and put them on the high poly model in Blender, and then we'll start baking onto the low poly.